You may think the best way to improve your personal finances is to buckle down, stay focused, and develop this unbreakable discipline that no one can throw you off of, but that's not true. There's a much easier way to do that, and it starts with what you do every day. The habits that you start today will tell the story of what tomorrow will look like for you. So in this video, I'm going to give you five very simple frugal living habits, and once you learn and apply these habits, you'll be on your way to a bigger, better financial future. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money and make more money, all while bettering yourself every single day. Let's get into this video. So we're gonna jump straight into this. Habit number one is asking yourself this one question. How can I improve my finances? Ask yourself this question every single day without fail. I told you these were gonna be simple habits, but this one habit, as simple as it may seem, has benefits that have the power to drastically change your life as early as two years from now. When you ask yourself this question, a few things happen. You start to get a big picture view of what you want in life, and you start to visualize yourself there, and you start to develop something that most people will never develop in their lives. And that's a crystal clear vision of what you want and how you'll get there. This question takes the limits off of reality and puts you in a space where it's just you and what you want in life. This simple question starts with outcomes and then breaks the outcomes down into reasons why. I'll give you a perfect example of what I mean, and I'm not exaggerating at all when I say this. A couple years ago, I was not happy with my situation at all. Like, I was seriously in a dark place, and I'm the type of person, I'm gonna fight no matter what, so there's no situation that's so bad that's gonna make me give up or throw in the towel. No, none of that's gonna happen. Either I'm gonna come out on top, or I will die trying. I know that sounds a little extreme low key, but that's just how I am. But anyway, that situation had me waking up every day asking myself, how can I improve my finances? Nobody told me to do this, by the way. I did it myself because I really wanted to get out of my situation. And I'll talk more about that in a second, but first I wanna point out something very important. It's the psychology behind this question that makes it so powerful. I've seen time and time again, and I'm sure you have too, where someone wants something that's really expensive, whether it's uh, an expensive car like say a BMW or an Audi, or maybe it's a pair of designer shoes. But they say, I want it. I want that Audi, I want that pair of shoes. But in the end, they just say, I can't afford that. Instead of stating why you can't do something, ask yourself a question that says, how can I afford it? When you ask yourself how, your brain starts to figure out ways to make that happen. And this happens when you're sleeping, this happens when you do your daily activities. And what happens on a very small scale is something amazing. This one habit creates a bunch of smaller habits that you don't even realize you're doing. So I'll tell you what happened with me. Back to the story of hating my life a few years ago, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to move away from where I was. I wanted to move away from the city I was in. The crime rate was stupid high. The job I worked at had fumes that were known to be carcinogenic. I made great money. The cost of living was low, but I hated my job and my boss, man. I can't say that I hate anybody because I don't, but basically the way most people would describe my old boss was if he was drowning, they'd pour more water on him. Let me stop, I'm not like that. But you get the picture, right? I wanted to get out of that situation because I had way too many bad memories there and I just, that was all I ever thought about. And so whenever I started thinking, how can I improve my financial situation? That was a question that I started to just ask myself every single day without fail. And those questions turned into answers. And then something crazy happened. Every morning I'd ask myself that question, I started to visualize it. And I visualized not just a monetary world, but I visualized a world where I wasn't stressed out, a world where I was actually happy, successful. Money wasn't an issue. And most importantly, I had this one thing that I'd never even heard of. And it was something that I couldn't fathom having. You know what that's called? Free time. I didn't have that back then because I was used to working 80 hour work weeks on top of a side hustle, so I didn't know what it was like to relax. So anyway, the answer got very simple and that was save a specific amount of money, at least $10,000, maybe even $15,000 because I knew in my mind that I had to break my lease because I wanted to get out of that city. And the crazy thing about this was the reality that I kept visualizing myself in got more and more vivid every single day. And it got to the point where when I closed my eyes, that was all I saw me and my perfect world. It became so real that I just decided one day, I was like, oh, I don't care how far I have to go away to get this. 
I'm getting out of here. I even got to the point where I was telling myself, when I quit this job, I will go as far away from here as possible. Every habit I built from saving to job hunting to negotiating salaries and everything paid off to the point where I was able to improve my finances so much that I was able to move across the country, make 12,000 extra dollars a year at work, in addition to having another stream of income on top of that without paying a single dime out of pocket for moving across the country. That's the power of asking yourself that question in case you were wondering. Now here's how I stayed consistent with that habit. This was part of my daily routine and you actually might wanna get out a pen and a piece of paper because this is actually pretty hard to remember. Wake up, ask the question, get inspired, grind. Wake up, ask the question, get inspired, grind. Every single day, bro. I didn't care how bad my day was, how discouraged I got, or how much I felt like my situation was gonna last forever. That was my habit every single day. Give it a try. We're gonna break this down even more because it pours directly into the next habit and you've probably heard of this one before, but I promise you haven't heard of my version of it. Write down your goals and get very specific. Simple, right? Not as simple as you think. Come over here and I'll show you what I mean. We need to understand what it means to set a goal and what that goal looks like. So check this out. An example of a financial goal would be, I'm going to save $20,000 by the end of the year. And you're gonna put parentheses and you're gonna put a date in that parentheses because it's gonna make that goal as specific as possible. So then that goal becomes this, by December 31st, 2021, I'm gonna have $20,000 saved. And then you know what you do? You break that down because whenever you set a goal that might seem big or ambitious to you, it can be very easy to get discouraged. So at the time of this recording, it's April 10th, 2021. So if I'm gonna reach that goal by $20,000 by the end of the year, that means I have seven months and 20 days to do so. Now let's say I have $5,000 saved already, but I need another 15,000 by the end of the year. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break that down. What that's gonna do is that's gonna help you build that understanding behind your goal because you can't build a financial future for yourself if you're not willing to understand what your goals really mean. Because goals are intimidating. Whenever you look at a goal by itself, it warps your mind and your vision to make you think and feel like the goals are bigger than you. And we're not having that mess over here. So when we divide that $15,000 by roughly eight months that are left in the year, you'll see that you need to save $1,800 $25 a month every month for the rest of the year in order to reach that goal. Then you can see if you can achieve that based off of what you're making right now. And if not, you have to ask yourself the important question. How can I save $20,000 by the end of the year? And cutting expenses might help, but if that cut expense only saves you $100 a month, that's not gonna cut it for your goal of saving $1,875 a month, even if you were already saving $1,000 a month. So then the question becomes, what do I need to do to make some extra income every month to reach that goal? Because you'd still be over $700 short. But most importantly, why do you want to reach that goal? The answer is gonna vary, but I'll tell you what a few people that I've talked to recently had to say. Their goals sounded like this. I wanna get out of student loan debt. I wanna buy a house. I wanna pay off my car. But my question to you is how strongly do you want that? Is it really urgent? Will your life really change if you meet that goal? For me, the answer was yes. There was no negotiating my goals because the urgency that I had to improve my life, the urgency I had to have that happier, healthier life where I actually had freedom, that lit a fire in me to the point where my dreams kept me up at night. And I already wasn't getting that much sleep. That's purpose. Your goals have to have a purpose. Always remember that. So the next time you say you want something, I want you to write it down. There's a certain power behind writing down your goals that I can't really describe, but more times than not, whenever I write down my goals, especially my money goals, I achieve them within the seemingly unrealistic time frame that I give myself. Because I want it bad enough and I'm willing to put in the work and the time to make it happen. And if you're not, you'll know by the time you break down your goal because it forces you to see what steps you need to take in order to make that goal happen. You might find that getting out of debt is way more attainable than you thought it was, or you might see that you might have left out a few steps in the beginning, but either way, it's gonna boil down to one question. Am I about what I say I'm about? Or am I just setting a goal for myself and saying that's what I want, just like everyone else? Because I had it made up in my mind early on that if I was gonna set a goal, I was gonna achieve it. Even if I don't do it in the time frame that I set for myself, I'm gonna make the right adjustments and I'm gonna get there. That's what this habit is gonna make very clear for you. Writing down your financial goals is something you can do once a year, even once a quarter, but I recommend that you revisit your financial goals at least once a month because life can change. You can become completely off base with your financial goals altogether and you won't know unless you check. You gotta be real with yourself and say, all right, I'm off track to putting away the extra money to invest in stocks, or I really fell off last month. I said I was gonna save 1,500, I only saved 500 because I messed around and took that trip to Vegas with the boys. 
Now here's something you may not have thought about. Whenever you set a goal, any goal in life, financial or not, there has to be an expectation because a goal without an expectation from yourself just becomes something catchy that you say without anything real coming of it. How many times have you heard someone say, I'm gonna get in the gym this year and I'm gonna get in shape, I'm gonna get ripped at the beginning of every single year, but make no traction? It sounds good, but is it happening? That's what you've gotta ask yourself. And that's what I ask myself. You have to move different. You'll have to think a little different. And that's what being frugal is all about. It's about thinking about the future that you want so bad. And the easiest way to do that is by automating everything. It's a very simple habit and it takes like two seconds to do. Like whenever I'd move into a new apartment, the first thing I did was put my rent and utilities on auto pay. So one great piece of advice I got early on in my personal finance journey was to treat your savings like a bill. And I thought that was such dope advice because that's a bill that you're paying yourself. And you know what? If I'm gonna treat my savings like a bill, that means I'm gonna automate it like a bill because I don't wanna think about it. And most importantly, I don't wanna forget because if I forget, that means I just missed a bill that I was supposed to pay myself. When you miss your light bill, your water bill, they just cut you off. That's, that's it. Hey, you should have paid earlier. But if you forget to pay yourself, there is no warning at all until you look into your savings one day and you realize you come up short and you have an OS moment because now you really need it. Y'all know what an OS moment is. You can make your life a lot easier by just setting up automatic savings with your bank, but the way I prefer to do this is through an app called Capital, spelled with a Q. This app is how I was able to save my first five figures in the bank when I didn't even know much about saving at all. And this is a great place to set your financial goals as well. Here's how the app works. There's a bunch of little categories and each category is called a goal and you get to custom name all of them. And what you do with each goal is you assign a certain amount of money to each of them. So here's how I had mine set up. I had emergency fund number one, emergency fund number two, I had a debt fund, and I had a family savings fund too. I had at least a couple thousand dollars saved in each category. And the reason I liked it so much is because with my regular bank, I couldn't just set up different savings categories in my bank, naming them different things. And the really cool thing about this app is you could have certain rules for each savings account you have. So for example, if you wanna go to McDonald's or something, you wanna go to the grocery store, buy something real quick, like say a pack of gum, whatever the spare changes, you can have that go straight into one of your savings accounts. And they can each have a different rule set up so you don't have to have the same rule for each one. It was a hands-off, set it and forget it type of thing. And when it's automated, it's easy. So I'll have that link below if you wanna check it out in the description. That's what I would recommend all day, every day when it comes to automating your savings. But think outside of savings. Think about your bills that normally wouldn't be automated. Stuff like credit cards, student loans, auto loans, basically any form of debt. People don't tend to automate those. But they should because a great frugal habit is to not force yourself to remember all of your financial obligations. Literally just set up an automation and let your money do the thinking for you. And the same thing applies with savings. And a lot of people I talk to feel on edge when I bring this up because they feel like they can't afford to automate everything. Especially when it's that weird transition of the month when you barely have any of your first paycheck left and you're just waiting on that next paycheck to come. And I'll be straight up with you because as much as I like to joke around and have fun with you guys on this channel, you need to hear this. If you can't afford to automate everything, you can't afford your lifestyle and you need to make a change. Matter of fact, if you fall into that category, I made an entire playlist for you. You can check it out up here and I think it'll really help you out. Now with that said, this habit I'm about to give you is probably the most important part of this entire video. Be grateful. Now before you come for me in the comments, before you say or think anything at all, being grateful is not easy to do, especially if you're anything like me where you want to have more in life. Like at one point in my life, I basically had to psych myself out to make myself feel like I was grateful for anything. But before I get to that, I wanna to talk to you about why being grateful is one of the biggest keys to financial success on the planet. Gratefulness is a state of being. Now I'm not about to hit you with none of that woo woo stuff. Now if you're into that, that's cool. But I don't do that over here, bro. You gotta go over somewhere else to get that. But anyway, grateful people think on a different level than everyone else. Go outside and look around. Literally, just, just take a walk one day and look at what you see around you. You can see it written on the faces of most of the people you walk by. And the words written on their faces are words like miserable, unhappy, defeated, discouraged. The list goes on and on. If they were grateful, they'd be more approachable. They'd make better decisions. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about decisions with who they want to be in relationships with, where they live, where they work. All this plays a role. So let me talk about how they get into this negative mindset. I made a whole video about decisions, so I'll link it up here in case you missed it. But basically, unless you're rich, you don't have to look too far to see somebody that looks like they're doing better than you. Literally, just get on Instagram and scroll for about 30 seconds. Now, I said they look like they're doing better than you for a reason, because it boils down to one thing, honestly, and that's perception. And the difference between someone like me who's genuinely grateful in life and someone who isn't is the fact that I can give two craps about how people perceive me. Don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this. So you come into contact with family members and friends who mean well, but they don't do your financial future any good because they're too busy instilling their wishes and beliefs in you to the point 
point where you feel obligated to go to college, get the car, get married by a certain age, and rush to go buy a house. And that's just off the strength of them urging you to do this. But while this is going on, a phenomenon happens. These very people look like they're doing better than you because maybe they've done all the things they're telling you to do, or maybe they just know somebody who has so they look like they know what they're talking about. You then look at your life and you become ungrateful without truly realizing how blessed you are. You might live in an apartment, but your family's rushing you to go buy a house. You may have a perfectly good used car that your friends call a piece of junk while they ride in their brand new Mustangs, making you feel like you're less than them because you decided to be frugal. That negative state of being ungrateful causes people to make straight up dumb financial decisions just to impress people. Man, let me give you a pro tip that I just realized myself. If someone doesn't understand the way you move financially, that's not your problem, that's theirs. Like here's a perfect example. When I was 20 years old, I wanted a Mercedes AMG so bad. And now looking back, I don't really know what I was thinking, but here we are a few years later and, and now I can get a Mercedes AMG and much more. And some of my friends know that and they're like, Reggie, why don't you just go get that? I, like I'm confused, why don't you just get it? Bro, it's not my fault if my financial decisions to improve myself and better my future confuse you. Moving on, if you're in that negative state that I was in, as I mentioned earlier, I hated life to the point where I got upset when I woke up in the morning. This is how you improve yourself to actually become grateful. This is at least how I did it. One of the first things I did every morning when I woke up was I thought of five things that I was grateful for. Now this could be physical, material things, or maybe it's a family member, you know, people that you have in your life that you're really happy to have, or maybe it's just your physical health. I'll give you five things I'm grateful for right now. I'm extremely grateful to have my health. I'm extremely grateful for my apartment, you know, to have a place to live. I'm grateful for food. I love food. I'm grateful for my family. And I'm grateful for this YouTube channel and having an audience that is there. It's pretty awesome. You see how easy that was? It wasn't always that easy for me. Like one time it took me 15 whole minutes to come up with five things that I was grateful for. I'm not even kidding. Like I know that's sad, but I'm just being real with you. And that was a struggle for me at one point. But you know what? Even though I hated my situation and I hated my job at the time, I was grateful for the amount of income that my job was able to provide because with that money, I was able to do some pretty cool things like provide for myself, help my family out. I was able to go out and have fun. I was able to invest and do things that I've never been able to do before. That shifts your mind. The point I'm making here is there's always something to be grateful for, even if you're in a general state of being ungrateful. There's always gonna be things in life that you appreciate. And if you start off every day just by reflecting on what you're grateful for, what you're gonna do day by day is you're gonna start taking the limits off of yourself to the point where you can just achieve anything. It also subconsciously tells you that life isn't so bad and you need to cherish the things in life that you do have because they won't last forever. Here's a great mindset shift. If you hate your apartment, well, at least I got a roof over my head. I'm grateful for that. If you hate your job, at least I have money coming in. I really want to challenge you guys to think different, like forget about the guy across the street, forget about what he has. You don't know what his pockets look like, you just know what his car looks like, but that's just a status symbol. Is it really a status symbol though? If he's driving to a job he hates? But we're not ready for that conversation though. All good, we'll talk about that some other time, but in the meantime, I want to talk about this before I get to the one thing that's going to sustain all of these habits. Being grateful doesn't mean that you're satisfied. I was grateful for my job's ability to pay me. All day, every day, I was grateful for that. But you better believe I wasn't satisfied with it. I was grateful for having a beautiful townhouse. But you know what? I wasn't satisfied with the fact that I never got to enjoy it because I was never there. So you can still be grateful and be motivated to improve your situation to make positive changes in your life. Only this time, the changes that you're making in your life are for you, not someone else. I know you gotta go watch another video of mine, but before you do, let me tell you something. A great habit that will help you along your entire financial journey is to continuously always educate yourself on personal finances because you can always improve, learn a new perspective, learn different strategies on how to save. You can learn strategies on how to invest. And what you can learn and apply from that can be the difference between you living an average life where you spend most of it wishing things were different and you actually taking the steps to build the life that you say that you want. That's what I had to learn. So do me a favor, bro. As this video comes to a close, pick up at least one of these habits starting today. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.